Different organisms respond differently to injury. Axolotls can regenerate entire limbs. Planaria can regrow heads from a single cell. But if we get even a small skin wound as adults, like most other adult mammalian tissue, we get scars, not regeneration of the tissue. But why? How come some tissues can regenerate while others form scar tissue? How was that decision mediated? And why ultimately would it be useful to have this information? Well, that brings us to the item on my head. Reindeer, also known as caribou, caribou, are known for their distinctive antlers, like the ones on my head, that are covered in a soft velvety skin and are used for fighting, mating and display. The interesting point of relevance for this video is that reindeer antlers also have the ability to regenerate after being damaged or broken. In this video, we will talk through this latest paper about reindeer regeneration and the wound response. So it all begins with an observation. What happens if you induce a small 12 mm diameter excisional skin wound in either the antler velvet or the dorsal back skin of adult reindeer? Well, the antler velvet regenerates after 30 days with new hair follicles, while back skin forms a scar. The researchers then wanted to explore the molecular basis behind this difference. But before we get to that, let's just revisit some basics of the wound response. And I did just say basics, but the repair of wounds is one of the most complex biological processes that occur during human life. But it's okay, we'll just look at the picture to get some idea. So what happens following tissue damage? Well, in response to the damage, there is the initial recruitment and activation of immune cells. So you have inflammation and blood coagulation to prevent loss of fluids and to prevent infection of an open wound. Secondly, there is new tissue formation that results from effector cell activation, one of the main cells being fibroblasts that can mediate this response. Fibroblasts are also involved in the last stage of the extracellular matrix remodeling, where you have disorganized collagen being deposited by the fibroblasts and the formation of scar tissue. The healed region lacks normal skin appendages, so hair follicles and sebaceous glands. So to break it down to three steps, you have inflammation, some proliferation, and some remodeling. Now that to me was a basic overview of the fibrotic wound response. And the reason why a fibrotic scar is bad is that it impairs tissue function as the features of the tissue, like the hair follicles and sebaceous glands, do not always reform. It therefore also diminishes the quality of life and you have a loss of tissue homeostasis. Now, the interesting comment they make in this review article is that they predict knowledge gained from studying organisms might help to unlock latent regenerative pathways in humans, which would change medical practice as much as the introduction of antibiotics did in the 20th century. I said that brings us back to the reindeer paper, where now I'll just break down their main findings. So firstly, we know that many cell types are involved in the wound response, so one of the first things the authors looked at was whether the composition of cells looks different in both the velvet and the back tissue. They did this by using something called single-cell RNA sequencing, so they looked at the molecular signature of gene expression found in the different cells at these different tissues, and they found that those in the velvet skin wound had functionally discrete populations of fibroblasts, so these cells that are important for the effector response in the wound. By taking a closer look at what genes were being expressed, they observed, perhaps as expected, that the back skin fibroblasts expressed a pro-inflammatory signature that included the factors CXL1, CXL3, while the velvet skin cells showed regenerative gene expression characterised by the genes CRAB-P1, MDK and TMP1. So evidently there was something about these velvet fibroblasts, but was it something that was intrinsic to the cells or intrinsic to the tissue? So what they did next was they ectopically transplanted velvet tissue to the back skin and after 30 days of this engraftment they induced the wounds. They saw little scar tissue suggesting regenerative competence is an autonomous feature of velvet cells, that is they still had the regenerative effect even when they weren't in their usual environment. However this ability was partially lost if the wound was induced six months post engraftment. So while there's this intrinsic property it was reduced over time. But given what they've learned from this finding, could they find a way to bias the wound response to regeneration over fibrosis? So to do that, they then reanalyzed a lot of their single cell RNA sequencing data that they got from the velvet fibroblasts and the back skin fibroblasts. And they looked at those that were differentially expressed. 
and those that were core genes being expressed in the back skin fibroblast include the immunomodulatory cytokines CSF1 and CXCL12. So they then tested whether if inhibiting CSF1 and CXCL12, these immunomodulatory cytokines, could improve outcome in a rodent wound model. And while following local inhibition, they could see enhanced skin regeneration. So I've evidently cut out a lot of information that was presented in this paper. But the most intriguing finding is that it seems that this fibroblast fate decision as to whether it's going to be fibrotic or regenerative seems to have been made prior to the wounds even occurring. And so this is interesting because, well, I work with fibroblasts and fibroblasts that become senescent. Plus, I saw reindeer in regeneration and thought the whole paper sounded pretty cool. And I like their approach and their experimental methods. But it does also raise some follow-up questions. How does senescence factor into this? The presence of senescent cells are thought to increase the rate of wound recovery. So are senescent cells present in one tissue and not the other? How is the initial priming occurring? How does it vary in other tissues? As it is not just the skin where we get fibrosis, heart attacks result in the formation of cardiac scar tissue. You get cirrhosis of the liver and you get fibrosis in the lung. I mean, that said, the liver has got some regenerative potential, so understanding that response in more detail could be important. Anyway, due to the similarity of deer with humans, potentially there are some lessons that can be learned to deeper progress in regenerative medicine by further exploring this model. As quoted in this article, future work defining the mechanisms by which fibroblasts prime regenerative or inflammatory gene expression may reveal additional functional tools to drive regeneration and reduce scarring in human wounds, as well as inflammatory skin diseases like psoriasis and eczema. So with that, there is only one final question to ask. Why do reindeer subscribe to the Shiki Science Show? Well, because they wanted to be the first to get their hooves on the latest scientific breakthroughs. And because she slays. Anyway, if you want to learn more about limb regeneration, then you should watch this interview I did earlier this year here. Otherwise, Merry Christmas, thank you to my Patreon supporters, and thank you for listening.